changing perceptions, pushing limits. Today's Africa is not framed by the past. A new generation is stepping up, embracing tradition while blazing a new path, giving voice to unique style, connected in ways others before were not. This is where the urban pulse meets creativity and a new culture thrives. This is African Voices. This week, the entertainers. Whether on stage or online, entertainment in the digital age still relies on one important ingredient, the element of surprise. We start in Cape Town with a magical performer applying modern day wizardry to an age old art. When I was younger, someone said to me that our lives aren't measured by the numbers of breaths that we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. And that changed my thinking. My name is Stuart Lightbody, and I'm a magician and sleight of hand artist, and my home is in Cape Town, South Africa. Beautiful illusion for you. It's magic. Whew. That's how I make all my money. I'm kidding, it's still here. If I get a little squeeze, it looks like it comes back. Got it. Yes. Not really, of course. Stuart Lightbody is a masterful magician who's been dazzling audiences in South Africa and beyond ever since he was a young boy. I've been doing magic since I was 12. It's so much a part of me that it's, it's difficult for me to imagine a life without it. I love uh, just practicing and training in magic. I find that the art itself, the structure of it, is fascinating. You can see the three coins clearly, and then in a moment, one coin can jump across. It's very fast, it takes about a tenth of a second. I timed it once. So. Can you see the two? Can you hear the two? And you can hear the moment it jumps, so that's how you know the coin has jumped. The final one is the most difficult. If I give it a little bit of a squeeze, it begins to shrink. Then it begins to fade, then it jumps. That's all three coins. I was definitely working in bars for tips out of the hat uh, before I was even legally allowed to be in bars. Stewart found a home for his magic in Cape Town and specifically at a theatre called Alexander Bar. Welcome, this is uh, Alexander Bar Theatre, the upstairs theatre they call it. One of my favourite places to perform. Uh, you can come through here. This is the space, it's fantastic because it's raked, so people can look down, they can see a tabletop, they can see my hands right up close, they can enjoy the illusion right up close. We can get about almost 50 people in here. <laughs> Stuart's signature performances are fast and full of surprises. To keep the magic alive, we're not slowing anything down. So you can see the tricks just like the audience does. I do a specific genre of magic. I'm a sleight of hand artist, so I mix psychology and dexterity together. My favorite work is with a, a pack of cards. Magicians want to share wonder with people, and so in order for us to do that, we need a collection of secrets, a collection of methods. But the important thing at the end of the day is not the method. The important thing is how the audience feels in that moment that they're watching the magic. It's the astonishment, the curiosity, the playfulness. Yes. And that's, that's why we keep our secrets. This is my voodoo doll. You'll notice he has about 45 needles stuck in him, some in the face, some in the hands, some in the arms, some in the legs. I don't think I decided that I could make a good living at it and then decided to be a magician. I think that happened the other way around. A mouthful of needles. Before I do a toast. To health. <laughs> when I was 19 years old, I decided that I loved magic and I would just do it for the rest of my life. And if it meant you know, living in a little one bedroom and only being able to eat breakfast cereal all day, then that would be fine because I would get to do magic. Stuart has won numerous awards over the years and performed everywhere from Amsterdam to Australia. He says his career didn't really take off 
until he attended the College of Magic in Cape Town. I think the College of Magic is a magical place and I've been very lucky that I've been able to travel the world and study under different magicians and meet different magicians. Not quite a Harry Potter education, he says it changed his life. Now he's giving back. I teach at the College of Magic, but I don't earn any money teaching at the College of Magic. So it's something that I do because I love magic. It helps me learn as a magician. You learn a lot by teaching other people, even the basics. Now we're going to show them the cards one at a time. You're teaching people an art that they can enjoy and enrich their lives through. And I think you learn a lot of other useful things. You learn about creative thinking. You learn how to solve problems, how to think outside the box. You learn about networking and presentation skills. I'll teach you how to sense the number. The number was six, yes? The first six I can sense like this. Ah, uh, yes, there's a six. A six of hearts. You could have changed your mind for a different card, but you said six. As much as he loves yeah. teaching, nothing compares to performing his illusions live. And the next six like this. Whether it's for two people. And I can pop that back into the center of the deck. Or 200. So I would like to get a few of you involved. Where was the pack of cards? Do we have the pack, sir? Fantastic. For me, every live performance is a high point in my career. I love having a room full of people and being able to share magic with them, even if it's a small room full of people, in fact, especially, and then I can really interact and connect with every person. Top card to the bottom. Next card, throw away. Never throw away your final card, of course. Top card to the bottom. Next card, throw away. You guys are done already. Top card to the bottom. Are you done? Yeah. We mixed and we threw them away and we shuffled them at your numbers and we're down to one card each. Now, someone thought of a four of a kind earlier. They named, was it, what number was it? Ten. Number 10. I have a 10. I have a 10. Show them, what do you have? A 10, what do you have? All four 10s. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Impossible. My advice for magicians coming up would be firstly to find a type of magic that you love and perform it all the time. If you perform it all the time, it'll get better and better and better. Keep the love of magic alive. Good choice. It was a good choice. <laughs> there was a lot of kids that were coming to us wanting, doing what we do. Nice. We thought we should start Second Zambia. Nice. Nice. Nice.